it is very difficult to predict the precise outcome of the general elections. We will really know on the 4th of June 2024. Depends on, depending on who you speak with, you're going to get different points of view. If you speak to a supporter of the Bharati Janata Party and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, they'll say, oh, we are going to win comfortably. Even if some of them say, no, this char so par, the National Democratic Alliance won't get more than 400. They nevertheless believe that they will form the government, the NDA, and the BJP's numbers won't come down from 303 and the NDA's number won't come down from around say 345 or more than that with supporting parties. There is a second view and that is the view of the those supporting the INDIA alliance opposed to the BJP. They'll say no, he's going to lose the elections. Then the numbers of the Bharatiya Janata Party and the NDA the National Democratic Alliance will not cross the halfway mark, which is 272. Will fall below that 272 to 273 mark. There is another view which says that Narendra Modi will be sworn in or is likely to be sworn in as the Prime Minister of India for the third consecutive term, but he will become weaker. That the BJP will not get 303 seats as it did in 2019 and the NDA as it exists today not the NDA that existed in 2019 would get less than the 345 seats that it got in 2019 so my personal view is that the last viewpoint that yes there is a possibility that Mr. Modi will be sworn in as Prime Minister for the third time but it seems unlikely that the Bharatiya Janata Party's numbers will go up. It would come down. But even if the BJP on its own gets anywhere in the region of 240, 250, with the support of its alliance partners in the NDA and other parties, it would form the government. That is a view. But what a week Mr. Narendra Modi would mean, that's a bigger question. It's very difficult to <laughs> predict what is going on. Uh, the Indian electorate surprises all of us. Most recently in 2004, when the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government, in which Mr. L.K. Advani was the Home Minister, brought forward the elections by four months. It's only after the election that they realized that the whole India shining campaign was not working. There may be other instances in the past also. 1977, March 1977, when Indira Gandhi lost the elections. Indian politics is very, very difficult uh, to predict. And as we are recording this, we are more than two thirds of the way in the elections through the elections. The elections are almost over in several parts of the country, several states of the country. So my view is that if the Congress and the INDA alliance increases its number by even 30 seats, say, if the Congress increases its number by just 30 seats, that would have an impact on who forms the government and which, what kind of government is formed in New Delhi. I would add one other point. There's been a lot of talk, a lot of discussion on the credibility of the electronic voting system. More than that, I think the credibility of the Election Commission of India has taken a huge beating, a huge blow. And the manner in which the Election Commission of India, it's a constitutional authority, has been working, has raised doubts about its impartiality 
and that is something which is most unfortunate i think for the first time we are seeing the actions of the election commission of india how it is reacting to those the allegations of violations of model code of conduct the the allegations relating to violation of the representation of the people act allegations relating to the use of hate speech we've seen that the election commission of india under the chief election commissioner rajiv kumar acting in a partisan manner it seems to be going very very soft on the ruling dispensation and not on those who are opposed to the bjp and the rss and the nda government in delhi to what the supreme court of india recently uh, opined my personal view is that the credibility of the election commission of india has taken a beating it is not just the way in which the electronic voting system works the manner in which electoral rolls are framed the manner in which voters on the ground are in certain areas intimidated and prevented from voting the manner in which money power could be misused all of these are factors which result in the credibility of the election commission of india going down and that is exactly what has happened the issues that concern elect the electorate and what would influence their voting are many you see people vote on on a combination of issues if you go along with what the bharatiya janata party is saying then the issue is that who's going to be the prime minister i think mr narendra modi's biggest success is that he's been able to convert india's multi party electoral system into a two person contest like an american style presidential contest i mean look at 2019 the bharatiya janata party on its own got 38% roughly and the nda got 45% what does this mean more than half of those who voted and there were more than th two, two thirds of those eligible to vote who, vote who voted that means more than half of those who voted did not vote for either the bjp or an alliance partner of the bjp in the nda but because those votes were fragmented that the bjp got its numbers but to what extent will it work will it be modi versus rahul gandhi as is being made out to be rahul gandhi says i'm not in the race he was being derogatory called pappu why is he no longer being called pappu has it got something to do with the fact that he walked 3500 kilometers from kanyakumari to kashmir and then traveled a longer distance when you ask those opposed to bjp he said no this is not a contest between two persons but ideologies so how does ideology matter what are these issues is it the ram mandir is it the towering personality of the all powerful prime minister who is perceived by some to be bhagwan's avatar the god god's incarnation or are they issues like unemployment inflation inflation non you know non serial inflation because mr modi has been successful in projecting his scheme of giving free food 5 kilograms of either rice or wheat and 2 and 1/2 kilograms of chickpeas to every family every month and he seen as that the annadata the man who provides but others see farmers as the annadata the providers of food as not having been adequately remunerated for their produce for one year they agitated and the government took back three controversial laws how important is this issue of infl of of inflation i would say it is a very important issue not rice wheat or chickpeas what about onions what about potatoes what about other fruits other vegetables that's one unemployment india is a young country the median age of india is 28 29 that means out of 
140 crore Indians, the most populous country in the world, more than 140 crore Indians, of which close to 100 crore are eligible to vote. And we are assuming that about three fourths, uh, sorry, about two thirds will actually vote. But what I'm trying to say is, what does the median age mean? That means 28, 29, half the population is below and half the population is above it. Now, how will the youth, for, for the youth of India, how important is this issue of unemployment? The government has been very, very parsimonious in putting out data. But there is enough data to indicate that employment generation has been very slow. That unemployment is today at a level which it has not been for almost half a century. Say the gap between the rich and the poor. The gap between Gautam Adani and Mukesh Ambani and the poor and the poorest of the poor, that gap has widened. And it's not me, but various economists across the world, including a panel comprising economist Thomas Piketty, they've said that India is today more unequal than it was when the British were ruling us. Is this an issue? I'm raising that as a question. Unemployment, inflation, inequality. What are, what, what, what are the most important issues? Or is it Ram Mandir? Is it Hindu versus Muslim? Is, is it India versus Pakistan? Which of these issues will matter more to the electorate, only time can tell. And we'll have to wait and watch till the 4th of June and the 5th of June to see what are these, uh, in which way the electorate of India have exercised or has exercised its franchise. Now should we go state by state? Because of our voting system, yeah, yeah. we have borrowed a certain kind of a voting system from the British. It's the Westminster style of parliamentary democracy. First past the post. After that, winner takes all. If you want me to give you a classroom example, say this whole country had two constituencies and each constituency had 100 voters. In one constituency, uh, or see, there are 100 voters, two constituencies, constituency one, constituency two. There are two candidates in each, A and B, and C and D. So in constituency one, A gets 49% and B gets 51%. B is the winner. First past the first, 49, 51. In the second constituency, and this is a hypothetical example I'm giving you, 99 out of the 100 don't vote. 98 out of the, uh, 99, one person votes for B. Right? B gets 51% plus 1% from the second constituency. So the party that represents B has won both constituencies. What happens to the 49 voters of constituency A? They're not represented at all. So this is a very, very simplistic example I'm giving you to tell you that there are certain limitations and distortions in the first past the post system. If we had what, is, what other countries call the proportionate representation, then, in the example I gave you, in constituency 1, because A has got 49%, A, A's party would be represented in the legislature. But here there is none. First past the post and winner has taken all. Many countries in Europe, other parts of the world, have a system of proportionate representation. Now, we don't have that. We have a lower house of parliament and we have an upper house of parliament. So these, the limitations of the first past the post system sometimes leads to exaggerations in both wins and loses. So that would explain why, despite the Bharti Janata Party getting 38% of the vote in 19, 2019, the looks of our elections, and the NDA getting say 45% of the vote, 
when it gets reflected in the number of seats in parliament, that 38 percent translates into 303 out of 543 seats in the lower house of parliament. So these things happen uh, because of the way the electoral system works.